my horse Devo has been missing and I would love to go try to find him but he needs a nice safe place to live so I decided to transform this entire ancient city for my horse Devo. Oh, and did I mention this took me four months to do? So you better stick around and see what I built. You won't regret it. Ancient cities are cool in their own right, but not very suitable for horses. So I had to do some thinking. My plan was to continue an underground city theme while putting my own twist on things. That means the structure of the city will remain the same, but I'll implement my own features like a garden, storage area, and a giant hole in the ceiling. Hmm. But the first obstacle we come across is a big one. Can anyone tell me what it is? Yeah, the skulk's gotta go. If you didn't know, skulk is the no-no block. Every time you see this in your world, your heart immediately drops and you feel like your real life is in danger, especially in hardcore. Luckily, in one of my previous episodes, we had already gone through and warden proofed this place so that scare factor was gone. It's easily mineable with your mother and it drops experience so we won't have to worry about durability. But Schmizzle, are you really gonna mine all this skulk? Yup, we're mining every single block. Let's start with the floor. I already knew that the floor wasn't going to be too bad because of the mobility that we had, but I was not ready for the walls and the ceiling. At first I used scaffolding because that's the type of thing it's used for, right? But in reality this method sucked and took way too long. So I did a little searching around the interweb and found a video by Tazo in which he encountered the same problem. Instead of using scaffolding, he decided to go to the end, find an end city, acquire a shulker, and bring it all the way back to the overworld. You know, I would rather not die, so I used meat instead. Lots of it, and it was way better than scaffolding. Woo, see that wasn't too bad. For you, you just saw a couple seconds of it, but the whole entire skulk took me around 10 hours to complete. And you may be wondering, how much skulk did I actually mine? Nearly 50,000 blocks of skulk. That's unheard of. Like, I don't, I don't know if I can do that ever again with any other block. And if you're wondering what 50,000 blocks looked like, boom. And yeah, I know, Tazo did this too. Don't, don't judge me. Okay. I know it's crazy though. I don't want to look at it any longer. I've seen enough skull for today. And even though I just mined all of that skull, I still need to destroy all the tattered buildings so I can enter build mode. And just like that, I was done holding left click. The skulk was gone, the buildings were gone, and I had to make the spider farm to repair subscribe a few times, but that was all over. I could use my brain with some trial and error to bring some life to this blank canvas. I decided it was best to use materials from the ancient city to build with, such as the deep slate brick set, as well as the polished and tile variants. My wood choice was spruce, the best looking wood in my opinion, and lots of trapdoors. A big asset to the city is going to be the types of pillars I use. I figured since we're underground by about 150 blocks, I should make it seem as if the cave's being held up. With that in mind, I thought up of four different designs that were different variations of each other. The first three will be an accent to our courtyard areas, and the fourth one is the pillar that is consistent throughout the outer walls. I decided to only brace the pillar walls to the ceiling because I'm lazy, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, did I mention walls? If I didn't, you'd probably find out anyways because they are about 50% of this build. It was a good thing they were straightforward to make, but they were very resource intensive. So farming for wood never got old. But that aside, mining for wood wasn't a big deal since we already had the other blocks ready to go. Now, it was time for us to get rolling.
started designing the first two pillars, I had a pretty good idea of how to shape out this courtyard. I didn't want the long hallway through it like in the regular ancient city, I wanted circles. And surely enough, with plenty of trial and error, the back courtyard was complete. We still needed to fix the outer areas and liven it up a little bit, but we'll move on for now. Okay, I kinda lied. Our last challenge for this back courtyard was designing the third pillar. I knew this one had to be bigger and better than the last two, but what kind of blocks do I use? I decided to incorporate some of the polished basalt I used for the pathway in the courtyard, and it went pretty well with the scene of the deep slate variants in spruce wood. So after fiddling with it for an hour, I got this. Just gotta do one more over here, and the back courtyard pillars are officially done. No sweat at all, just a few tears. I went ahead and finished the back courtyard, just made another circle in there, it looks pretty neat. And now the back courtyard was officially done. Yeah, remember what I said about those walls? We have to build those now. I decided to go with this alternating look between these two patterns, and it looked pretty neat. It also matched up with the sizing of the old walls, so everything would be centered. The inside of the walls is a hallway with a red carpet, and due to the complexity of the outside, the inside looked good too. I added some entryways throughout the wall, so it would be symmetrical, which added a nice touch. So we have a decent amount done so far, but this is where I came up with the idea to have pillars on the corners of the wall. Granted, it would take a lot more work, but I knew it would elevate the build. Watching this back, I remember how long it took me to get it just right. But in the end, the time I spent was worth it because these things looked amazing. The emptiness of the air vanished as soon as I started popping these up in every corner. The vibe of the cave being graced up by these made the build that much better. After I built it once, it became second nature and I could put one of these things up in 15 minutes. And the same for the walls. Not too soon after, the walls were 90% complete. But we can't pat ourselves on the back yet because we had a new problem. We had more stuff to destroy. In order to place the front courtyard pillars, we have to destroy the existing ones, which were solid. At least we're switching it up a little bit. Four hours was insane. After taking a short break, I had to relearn how to make those pillars again, which wasn't a big deal until it was. If I'm being honest here, I messed up on the back courtyard pillars by one block, so it wasn't noticeable, but the front courtyard was bad. The one thing I didn't want to do was have to destroy something I had built just to build it again, but unfortunately, even us Minecraft YouTubers aren't perfect. Things like this make me seriously question what I'm doing with my life. But wait, it gets worse. I still had more blocks to break. clearing out this front hallway, the infamous ancient city portal was the last thing to stand in my way. First, I cleared out almost every single block around it, which took even longer than the previous pillars, but nothing prepared me for what I was going to have to endure next. These blocks in the center of the ancient city are called reinforced deep slate, which is unobtainable in survival mode. There are a couple ways I could destroy these, the most popular being this glitch that breaks bedrock. In the current versions of Java, to break bedrock, you need to update the block of bedrock on a specific frame. You can do this by lighting TNT and placing a piston facing the bedrock against a redstone power source of some sort at the right moment. What this does is the game thinks that when the TNT breaks the piston, the piston is extended, therefore deleting the block that the piston head occupied. This method is very dangerous and if not done correctly, you will die. Method number two is to break it with a pickaxe. Simple, right? Well, yes, but simple things come with a cost. There are 56 pieces of reinforced deep slate in the portal and each piece takes about one minute to mine. You heard me right. One minute. You must be crazy if you think I'm going to spend that much time mining all of that. An hour of my life. Gone. Do you know how many things you can do in an hour? I can make myself a nice dinner. Twice. Or watch three episodes of Peak. Or go to the gym. But instead, I was holding left click for one hour on 56 blocks. If I wasn't building something special for Dave in the center, I probably would have left him here. But it's going to look so awesome, so I just had to do it. So the long and tedious, boring but straightforward part has been finished. The walls of the ancient city were complete, as well as all of the pillars. Now for the fun part. Throughout the ancient city, there are 15 different sections ready to be spiced up. Since this ancient city is designed to fit me and Dave's needs, I felt as if he needed a nice garden to chill in. So I found the perfect spot for it, and got to building. I 
started by placing grass along the base and then followed by building this path connecting to the walls and around a center point of the garden. Adding leaves as bushes around the pathways added a nice touch as well as the lanterns on the fence posts. I wanted to have the pathways going around a giant tree in the very center of it all and I knew building it would be a pain. adding a couple of glow berries and lanterns to it and voila the giant tree was complete but what would a garden be without a pond dave needs something to drink after all so i left a spot in the bag for it and after a few tries i got it to look as natural as can be the garden was near completion i only needed to add some flowers grass and a few beehives with the garden finished that was one out of 15 areas complete i wanted to move davo in as soon as possible but i figured he could wait just a little longer right in the meantime i asked you guys what should i build in my ancient city i set around a city of houses and buildings i felt like it was necessary because Dave would get lonely without his villager friends. My idea was to have different buildings for different professions villagers can have, and I started with the floor. floor design was nothing special, and neither were the buildings. This first house was the library, and I freehanded it quite a bit. Next was the forge, which was just a platform with a gazebo. And then I created this plot design for a farm and filled it with potatoes and carrots. And finally, I made the farmer's house with a fenced off area connected to it. This wasn't all too special, but it'll serve its purpose. I had a nice path as well as some grass around it to finish plot number 2 out of 15. The church was getting its own section, considering how big it'll be. I spent a couple of minutes figuring out the outline of it, and ended up not liking it all too much. I tried over and over again, but never got it quite right. It was one of those things where you had a great image in your mind but couldn't execute it, so I settled for this and left it. And then I took a break, not because I was burnt out or because I couldn't play, but because the people had spoken. You guys had asked for a 100 days video, so I had to deliver. So thank you guys for the massive support on the last couple of videos, and I hope that you're enjoying this one so far. But the whole time I was thinking about how could I make this the best build ever. Grass. Grass was the answer. Okay, okay, grass wasn't really going to make this build amazing, but it was definitely going to help. All of this deep slate is gross, and I was ready for a new change of scenery on the floor because I didn't change the walls or ceiling. Breaking and placing grass was somehow way better than destroying all that deep slate. There's just something so therapeutic about insta mining blocks in Minecraft. Even though I ran out quite fast, it was still enough to get the build on its feet again. Another suggestion I got was to build my face, so I did, and it was pretty cool because I'm pretty cool. One of the things this place was lacking was the villagers themselves. Luckily, when I was farming gunpowder, a zombie villager spawned. That cut the amount of villagers I needed in half. With that being said, I started the curing process and in the meantime I went back to my starter place and kidnapped, I'm, I mean borrowed, a villager. Since I was going to need way more than two, I knew my next build was going to be a villager breeder. These are super simple to set up. You build a 9 by 9 plot of land and plant carrots, dig a hole for the babies to fall through, place the beds for the babies to go to, and build the collection system, and you're done. Now we just fancy this up a little bit, throw our villagers in there, and see if it works. And after 20 minutes, a villager emerged, as I planned, and we have 5 out of 15 plots decorated. The villagers were for Devo, so he felt at home, but I had a use for them as well. You see, I was running out of food down here pretty fast, and if you play Minecraft, you know golden carrots are the best food to consume. So instead of dealing with the food situation on my own, I borrowed some help. And by borrowed, I mean forced three villagers to farm me food for eternity. Um, I swear I'm a good person, okay? The build was super simple, just like the breeder, and worked phenomenally. The villagers would farm the crops, throw them to their buddy, which would get picked up by a hopper, and I would sell them back to the villagers and then trade for golden carrots. Work smarter, not harder. Another farm I was going to need was sugarcane. Rockets are a huge accessory in the end game, and I got tired of going to find sugarcane and farming it manually. This time, I didn't need slaves to do my bidding, I just used some redstone.
reality, I think this is a little overkill, but I needed to fill the entire spot to finish the seventh build of the ancient city. While we're on the topic of farms, we might as well talk about an iron one. I figured I might as well build one since it's always nice to have extra iron for different projects in the future. I didn't want to build any ordinary one though, but I found this portal based farm which would get me around 1600 iron per hour. The way it works is a zombie floats up and scares the villagers, just like any other farm, and the iron golems spawn inside the portal, immediately teleporting them to a kill chamber where the items will be shot through a portal with a redstone clock. Seems simple right? Well it actually was until I got the villagers into place. For some reason they just wouldn't cooperate so with a little finagling, the farm started to work. The only problem was the iron golems would spawn in the wrong portal in the nether, and I didn't know how to unlink the certain portals, so I just tore one of them down and scrapped the redstone clock. Rather have productivity than a few hours of brain torture. I already had enough trying to spawn proof this area. Iron farm being complete got us over halfway on the buildings, but in reality I had so much left to do. I felt like the areas around the buildings were bare, so I started to create some pathways. They were designed after the courtyard and added a nice touch to the walls. In addition to the new pathways, I had to subtract all of the floating meat. It started to drive me crazy and I was kind of getting burnt out so this was something relatively brain dead I could do. a lot better. I hadn't seen this place without it and honestly I don't miss it. Burnout was still kicking me in the teeth so there was something else I didn't mind doing. Remember last episodes where I found the cave that leads to the surface? Well I wanted to make it a lot safer considering how easy it is to die with an elytra in a closed space. The hole that was initially there was kind of off centered so I created a new one. I measured out with meat, dug the outline, and started to dig. times like this, I wish I had gotten a beacon before this project because the digging would have gone a lot faster. Before I decorated everything, I needed to widen some of the thinner areas of the cave. While doing so, I ran into a pool of water inside the wall. It made me so happy taking 30 minutes of my time to plug it up just to dig it out again. After that was done, the rest was pretty simple and then it was time for decoration. of wood on the outside mixed with the pattern of deep slate variants on the inside with a strip of the redstone lamps looked insane. I'm glad the way up was a lot safer now. I wanted to set up a landing area as well as a stable but I had something more important to do. Pathways. Lots of them. Just kidding, that's not as important. The enchanting slash storage slash smelting area was the most important. I had mined all of those blocks in the hole and there were dozens of chests full of unsorted items. So a slightly below average storage system was in order. But instead, I built this really cool enchantment table. I know, I know, this glass texture has been used time and time again, but come on, doesn't it look so clean? And of course I had to throw a little sidebar there with some barrels, brewing stand, anvil, and a crafting table. Now we can start the storage system. I didn't want it to be anything special because later on in another video, I will make an auto sorter for every item. But for now, we just need a couple of labeled chests. The same thing goes for the smeltering. I will build a huge automated one when I need to, but for now, a tiny one like this will do. Throughout this ancient city, I built things for Devo. I built things for me, but I wanted to create something for you guys. This hall that I've constructed will become my subscriber hall, where I show my appreciation for my fans. I'll be putting names of people who follow me on social media, on the block of their choosing, on whatever sign color they choose. You're probably like, Schmizzle, what's the catch? Well, one, you have to be subscribed to my YouTube or following my Instagram or Twitter. And two, you can't all be choosing the same blocks. That'd be boring. I bet the pain of me getting nine netherite blocks for every video would be hilarious to y'all, but I'd rather be able to work on the video instead of that. All you have to do is comment your block and sign color on whatever I post and you'll have a chance to be in the hall. I figured this would be a good way to thank you guys for the support y'all have given me in the past few months. I'm nothing short of grateful. And it gives you another reason to subscribe. Next up on the list is the nether portal. I've always wanted to build a cool portal sword like everyone did in 2020, but never got the chance, so this was my perfect opportunity. 
Yeah, so you know when I said I was burnt out earlier? The last couple of things I did were necessary, but not really for the project at hand, so I needed a little break. And when I came back, I made sure to fix up this nether portal. The ancient city was near completion, only missing the front courtyard and the mystery monument in the middle. I was still deciding what to do with them, so I finished the rest of the pathway around the place. I really liked how it turned out, being a simple but attractive pattern along the area, and it kind of made up for the empty space everywhere. And with that complete, we only had two more buildings. This front courtyard is going to be what the back one could not. It will have the same concept, but the pathway only have one circle. The outer portions will be grass and in the middle I will build a nice big fountain and I'm glad my burnout was gone for this one. The fountain had been complete and look at this thing, it fits so well with the atmosphere and was a great idea for this courtyard. And just like that, the ancient city had only one piece missing. I've made Devo wait too long and for that I owe this last build to him. This build was going to need a base to rest on so I came up with a very basic pattern. I also wanted to surround it with water and have two bridges connecting it to the paths. And with all of our preparation set, we started the construction of the final build. that the giant horse statue was complete, marking this as Dave's domain. He waited patiently for his return, so we had to surprise him to the fullest. But with that, the final touches were done. The last four months had come to a close. Through all the ups and downs, all the blood, sweat, and tears, it was finally time to bring Davo to his new home. And now it's finally time to show Devo this transformed ancient city. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel. I want to make this hardcore series as great as possible, but I can't do it without your help. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a blessed day.